yesterday we did a uh, podcast. Uh, Steve thought we were doing a podcast on the Get Out of Debt site. I thought we were doing a podcast on <laughs> our side hustle channel, uh, the Penny Stupid Project. So yeah. Steve introduced us as the Get Out of Debt guys and all that good stuff and said I had a good story. And I launched right into some tirade <laughs> about Walmart spark drivers potentially hiring illegals. Yeah. And Steve just rolled with it and didn't tell me till after uh, that was supposed to be a podcast about credit scores. Credit scores. <laughs> <laughs> Said we well, talked about Walmart Spark driving, hey, you, delivering you get, groceries. You get what you pay for on the Get Out of Debt Guy podcast. But uh, yeah, hey, absolutely. Well, welcome back. Uh, I'm Steve Rode, and that's Damon Day. And as I said at the start of yesterday's podcast, if you need to get in touch with somebody and talk about a financial situation, credit debt, whatever, credit repair, credit scores, all that stuff, find Damon. Damon, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y dot com. And Damon, I have been absolutely horrible about this on every podcast that we have done. If you like the video, you want to help us out for with a little something for free, just hit the like button on the damn video, please. And subscribe to the channel. Uh, you're going to be getting more. And if you're listening to an audio podcast, uh, you probably don't have a like button. But what I would like for you to do is just like wave at your speaker and wish us well. That'll be that'll be good enough for me. <laughs> Damon, the burning topic that we have today is drum roll credit scores. Walmart credit scores. Walmart Spark Driver credit <laughs> scores. And, no credit uh, scores. Consumer credit scores. Okay, tell me what's on your mind. Uh, well, consumer credit scores. I think the main point of this podcast today was consumers need to stop worrying so much about their credit score. I'm not saying life's not easier with a good credit score, mm -hmm. but you know, I've been helping people with this stuff for 20, 25 years. Steve, even longer than that. Cause he's so old. I'm old. He's very old, <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen so many just nonsensical decisions Mm -hmm. um, emotional decisions made because of that fear of what about my credit score? Yeah. And ho I'm hoping today we can unpack some of those fears, some of those myths and give some people some practical advice and some practical information and maybe a new perspective on how to view the credit score, especially if they're in a situation where they're paying a thousand, two thousand dollars a month in interest on mm -hmm. high interest credit cards and loans but are worried about being as aggressive as maybe they should be to get rid of that debt right? because they're worried about the impact to their credit, but they're not weighing that against the impact of continuing to carry that debt month in and month out. Well, I mean, let's say you make a, a, a good, logical, rational decision about how to deal with a difficult financial problem, and in the short term, that might impact your credit score a little bit, and uh, it might be a little bit reduced. But you will elim eliminate that debt. And in the long term, it is so stupid easy to rebuild a good credit score that uh, it would make more sense for you to live through that little short irritation than for you to waste five or 10 years or a substantial part of your retirement income just because you're afraid that your credit score is going to take a hit. Yeah. And obviously, every situation is different, and all things need to be considered. It's never a, oh, your credit score doesn't matter at all, or your credit score matters 100%, and nothing else, you know, nothing else matters. You got to look at the individual situation, and right. you know, you'll get things like, well, what if I need to buy a car? What if I need to rent a house? Yeah. What if I need to do this? What if I need to do that? And those are all things that can be addressed on an individual level, right? Because right? sometimes I'll have clients, and we'll we'll be talking about. Um, they really should, you know, consider a bankruptcy in their situation or maybe an aggressive debt settlement or something like that because they're carrying too much debt and they're drowning. Yeah. And then the credit score is always what comes up. Well, what is this going to do to my credit? What is the bankruptcy going to do to my credit? And so, and that's fine. That's a normal question. And we can talk about that. Yeah. And let's, let, but let's talk about it in real terms. Let's look at the next couple of years of your life. What are your plans for the next couple of years? Right. Oh, um, we're planning on, uh, you know, uh, moving. We rent right now. We're going to rent a new place. We need to move to a new city in four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's incorporate that. If we're moving to a new city in four months, you have good credit now. You have all this debt. Well, it wouldn't make sense to do anything that's going to tank no. the credit score within the next four months. Right. So let's create a custom strategy for that client. Let's get that thing taken care of. Now, if they said, or we, we may want to move at some point, well, you know, that's a different story because well, now we always have to weigh 
well, what what is this, you know, uh, credit score doing for you now versus this debt that you have? And a lot of people are like, well, I might not be able to finance a new car. And I look yeah, at their, even, their, their credit. Even the situation that you just brought up has some nuance to it because let's say you're going to relocate, like you said, and there are two things that you do and don't need to be worried about. One is if you're moving to a new area and you're going to rent from a corporate landlord, then yeah. your credit score absolutely matters. But Damon, mm-hmm. you have uh, experience or know about people who have been able to rent from private landlords. No, oh, I got score. personal experience, baby. I've been there and done that, got the hat and the t-shirt to match. I know Doesn't about living matter. life with bad credit. I'm an expert. <laughs> Trust me. I, I know, how to, to, say I know how to navigate. I, I know where you were going. So I thought I'd just help you out and throw your life raft. Thank you're you. like, uh, you, you've had some experience or maybe know somebody. Yeah, yeah I know somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody. Yeah. So you've, you've been able to rent some, you know, great properties without the landlord even giving a crap about your credit score. Well, as as you say, um, you know, I have a knack for falling and shit coming out smelling like a rose. <laughs> That's true. I, I do I do have the gift for gab, you know, so not yeah. everybody has the same kind of personality. But yes, there are ways and you know, when when you're trying to rent a house or whatever, if you think if if you have bad credit, you can't rent a place or find a house, you can't get a car. Mm-hmm. I always say, Where are all the, the massive homeless people? There are millions of people in this country that have bad credit but yeah. they live in houses, they have cars. There's ways that you can do it. Now, is it as easy if you had an 800 credit score and plenty of cash and no debt? No, it's not. But that's probably not your situation if you're listening right. to this podcast because a lot of times people worry about their credit, but the debt that they have and the debt to income ratio that they have is going to prevent them from getting a mortgage or a car loan anyway. Right. You know, even, if you, even if the score is 700, if you can't afford that payment, you're going to have a hard time getting that loan anyway. Right. So what are you preserving that credit score for? And again, I'm not saying credit doesn't matter. Just trash it. I'm saying if you're in a situation, you really need to take a step back and make sure you're making a good decision, not just anything that touches my credit score is not something I should do. I'm going to keep paying this thousand dollars a month in interest on these credit cards until hopefully I get a raise or something gets better. That's usually not the right path. No. And the point that you brought up earlier, I want to amplify is every situation is different. There are, are no broad brush things that apply to everybody when we're talking about credit scores. What does apply is if you think that your credit score is the most important thing right now, uh, you really need to talk to, to Damon and work through the situation because your emotional assumption about your credit score oftentimes clouds the logic and reality about the situation that you're going through. One thing that has irritated me all these decades, Damon, is all these decades. Yeah, since the <laughs> advent Decade. of the the computerized credit score, uh, people think that their credit score is somehow a measurement, a grade, or reflection of how smart or wise they're doing with their personal finances. That that there's nothing further from the truth uh, about that. Credit scores were designed. We didn't always have credit scores. They're actually a modern invention. Credit scores were designed to allow lenders to make computerized, fast decisions about risk. And so you could actually have a low credit score because you've avoided debt and you listen to some of these personal finance people say you never have a credit card or anything else. Yeah. Your credit score is going to be the toilet. But that yeah, but those you're... people are fine. They're able to get houses and cars and things like that, you know, and they don't have credit cards and they don't have a good credit score. Right. If you have a if you have a great credit score, <laughs> Damon and I are probably the yin and yang of, of credit scores. Uh because if you have a really good credit score. I think then... Steve's like eight fifty one. Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> well, well, unless they bumped up the best to 900, but I think it was 850. It has been 850 for a while. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But if, it, if the best you can have is 850, Steve has yeah. 851. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. He's I can. so boring. He's an old boring yeah. dude. I'm much yeah. more fun at parties. Yeah, with good credit. 
I almost I'm, spit my coffee all over my computer. <laughs> I'm placing the order. Damon's paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the credit card. <laughs> Put it in the truck, Bob. That's right. What the hell? Let's get a spa. No, but, you know, having a high credit score doesn't reflect anything other than uh, I'm really low risk if somebody wants to lend to me. And it makes it cheaper and easier to get a loan. Like, I just bought a car. and Or I've been really smart at manipulating the credit scoring system because it's all a game. It's all it, a game. It, it is all a game. And I am the king at manipulating the credit score. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be manipulated. That, that is absolutely. absolutely true. So you shouldn't live or die by your credit score. You should understand in your particular situation with the things that you have at hand um, what you should do and what you should be worried about when it comes to your credit score. If you're drowning in debt, I'm worried that if I, for example, like settle my debt or go bankrupt, I'm gonna, my credit's going to be shot for seven or ten years. I'm never going to get it. No, that is bullshit. You you yeah. won't be able to get a, a new car loan, a mortgage, you know, everything else. Damon is a shining example of the tell the story about the. I'm a offer. city up on the hill. <laughs> oh, yeah, a shining city on a hill. The <laughs> offer that you got right after your bankruptcy. Oh yeah. A long time listeners, which we have at least four or five of, yeah. will probably know the story. But yeah, when I filed bankruptcy back in 2011, um, the day I got my bankruptcy discharge, they send you a little paper in the mail that says, you know, congratulations, you know, you wiped out all this debt, right? Mm -hmm. The same day I opened my mailbox, I still remember this, I get in the mail, I'm going through it, got my discharge, a couple hundred thousand dollars wiped out, done. Oh, and here, brand new Capital One credit card. Not an offer for a Capital One credit card. There it is. They solicited me before. Like, as soon as I filed my bankruptcy, they're like, oh, we got a new, you know, yeah. potential, uh, uh, my mind just drew a blank, a potential sus, uh, um, Suspect. chump. <laughs> chump. We got a new chump. <laughs> but brand new credit card. And it was basically like, you know, hey, it's our fresh start program. So they yeah. were like trolling the roles of the bankruptcy filers. And that was what they were using as their lead list. People that filed <laughs> bankruptcy, they were sending out offers to get a new Capital One credit I mean, that's card. That's actually good marketing. Yeah. And and there was, I think there was one or two Capital One credit cards included in my bankruptcy. And they were like, oh, that yeah. was old news. That was back then. Don't worry we about it. We know you've turned over new leaf. And yeah. They offered me a, a brand new credit card. And the same day I got the discharge, just coincidentally was the same day the new card actually arrived. So I got discharge. Start again, buddy. Right. And and the and the crazy thing was Steve's right. Like it that's a great way to get lists of names because if you just file a chapter seven and I'm a bank and I lend money and I make money, well, I know you're not gonna have any other obligations anymore. Right. You just wiped them all out. You're gonna be flush with monthly cash because you're not having to pay all these bills anymore. Right. You're gonna want you're gonna want a fresh start. You're gonna be of the mindset of I'm gonna do better moving forward, so I'm gonna pay all my bills a month early, right? And you're the and you can't go bankrupt again for another seven years. Right. You're the perfect person to give money to at that point. You're like the best person in America, the guy that just filed bankruptcy. Let's loan his ass some money. <laughs> it's backwards. It's a bizarro world. Yeah. So don't make a decision just based on what you fear that your credit score may be. Now, it, it will hold you back from some opportunities, but you can. So does holding 50 grand in debt. That holds yeah. you back, too. Yeah, you can. You got to weigh that. it. <laughs> you can address that, and you can rebuild your credit. Actually, if you're doing it with intention, you can rebuild it very fast. You could rebuild your credit faster than you can pay off fifty grand. I bet. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So and cheaper and cheaper. Yeah, if you have access to uh, what is it, uh, annualcreditreport.com, mm -hmm. um, you can get a free copy of your credit report. You can look it over, and you can see. What information is accurate or inaccurate? And if it's inaccurate information, you should dispute it, and that will come off your credit report, and that will help increase your score. And you can I have, a, also... I have a cheat sheet. I have a cheat sheet for that. What's that? So if you're trying to figure out if it's accurate or not, yeah. if it's bad, mm -hmm. it's inaccurate. No. <laughs> it's just general rule of thumb. If it's bad, you don't want it. It's inaccurate. No, that's, I don't think. Right. No, no. My, credit, right. my credit's good. It's all on time. I, I didn't let, I didn't delay. let those five, I didn't let those five credit cards go. No way. I didn't. No, know. that's not me. <laughs> uh, so Damon, what else do you have to add on credit scores? Anything? 
Well, I always, when I'm talking to clients and we're having this inevitable conversation, I always like to break it down. And I always tell clients, look, you got to place a dollar value on your good credit, right? Like, and you got to look forward. What's your life going to look like for the next couple of years? What are we trying to accomplish? And, and we talk about, you know, does, does your income, uh, you know, require you to have a good credit score, right? Like if you're a house flipper. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, I flip houses for a living and I go and I get loans from these banks. I, I buy these houses, I fix them up and I flip them. And I have to have a good personal credit score to do that, let's say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's different than the guy that's got a W-2 job that's not planning on moving anytime soon. He already owns his house. He's got two fairly new cars. He's not planning on buying any new cars. He doesn't have. And I say, well, what, what are you going to use your credit score for in the next two to three years? If they don't have a good answer, you know, or they can't, they're like, that's a good point. I never really thought about that. I say, okay, well, let's look at the debt that you have. Mm-hmm. And let's look at, you know, if, if you got 50 grand in debt and you can qualify for a chapter seven and that makes sense. And you wipe out 50 grand in debt. And the biggest downside is you can't buy a new house or a new car for a year or two. And then, but within two or three years, your credit is going to be back to probably better than it is right now. Cause you don't have the debt. Yeah. And I got a, you know, 50 grand in one hand and good credit in the other. Which one do you want? Do you want the 50 right. grand or do you, do you want good credit that you're not planning on doing anything with? So you got to break it down to a dollar value and really make a good decision that says, I'm, I want my good credit because I just freaking want it. I want good credit. I want good credit. It's been I want to be judged. <laughs> yeah, but what, but what are you going to use it for and how much is that worth to you, a specific dollar value? And if settling the outstanding credit card debt or going bankrupt or doing something that's going to affect the credit score temporarily mm-hmm. saves you 30000 40000 50000 you really have to ask yourself, is preserving yeah. my current 700 credit score worth more to me than $50,000 or 20,000 or whatever it is. And that's up to you. But that's how you should break it down to really decide if you're preserving something that's worth preserving. Right. Don't make an emotional decision. As I've always said my entire career, debt is just uh, math wrapped in emotion. So don't make an emotional decision. Oh my God. Uh, uh, Damon, we've heard it so much. Oh my God. It's going to, how's this going to impact my credit? I, I, you know, I really don't care. We need to put the fire out before we start rebuilding the house. Yeah, and I keep going back to you. You could probably rebuild your credit a lot faster. You could pay off the unsecured debt that you have that's charging you 25% interest and you're paying $12,000 a year in interest or whatever it is, but you're holding on to this good credit score that you'd have a hard time getting a good loan for anyway because you got all the debt. Yeah. Just a good credit score is just part of trying to get a loan or trying to do whatever. There are ways to rent houses and rent apartments and and even buy cars with with horrible credit. Now, are you going to pay more on the interest with Mm -hmm. bad credit? Yeah, but let's yeah. weigh that against, okay, you have to, when do you have to buy a car? Maybe you could buy the car first before we do anything to your credit. But if not, you get in a pinch and you have to. Well, I'm going to be paying $50 a month more on this old car that I bought. All right, well, so okay. you rebuild it, refinance it. Well, you're currently paying $1,000 a month on all this debt that you have hanging around. Yeah. So what's worse? You may or may not have to pay uh, 50 or $100 more on a car that you may or may not have to buy hmm. in a year or two. Or guaranteeing definitely paying $1,000 a month in interest right now on all this outstanding debt you have. Which one makes more sense? You know, when you think about it, uh, if people could think logically in the moment, they would. Then I wouldn't laugh. have a job. Yeah, you wouldn't have a job. And, you know, <laughs> I wish we could just get people to laugh at themselves, you know, if looking back six months later. So what you yeah. said six months ago was, oh, my God, my debt is it's killing me. My relationship is suffering. Um, I, you know, I just can't. I'm depressed. I can't deal with this. But, oh, my God, I don't want my score to go down 50 points. Yeah. Well, what do you always say? A, a consultant is somebody that tells you the time with your own yeah, watch. Borrows your, yeah, bar, <laughs> borrows yeah. your watch and tells you the time. And, and, and that's, in a sense, kind of what I do. But it's, it's very different. You know, when I tell people things and we have this discussion about, you know, debt and different ways to do it. Mm-hmm. Number one, it's different when it's coming from somebody that knows this stuff and has been dealing with it forever. And a lot of times a, a client will say, that and everything I say is going to make sense. They're going to say, well, that tracks, that makes sense. And once they have it explained to them, it's not like I have this profound theory, but being able to show them, hey, this is what's going to happen if we take this action. This yeah. is what's going to happen if we take this action. And it, they can just kind of see it unfold and go, oh, that's not as bad as I had it built up in my mind. And after the fact, you might say, well, why didn't I just think of that on my own? And, and the answer is because that's not, this kind of information is just not out there. You've got all these, I don't want to say forces conniving against you. But just look at like say bankruptcy. What industries or people are going to be out there promoting the idea of you should file bankruptcy versus 
the industry or, or the people that are going to promote, promote the idea that bankruptcy is the most horrible thing ever. Well, Think about funny. what you have working against you. Yeah. So right? if in the, the three camps of dealing with debt, right, you've got the credit counselors, the debt settlement people, and the bankruptcy. And credit counselors and debt settlement people are going to tell you how horrible and life-destroying bankruptcy is going to be. Yeah. And, and so, but you have to understand the reason that they're telling you that is because they're trying to sell you their widget, not give you, you know, independent financial advice like Damon. Yeah, well, banks don't want you to file bankruptcy. They're going to, like, you know, that's why they have the credit score in the first place, because they yeah. hold it over your head like, oh, if you go bankrupt, this, you know, this is going to go down. Woo. But you got the banking industry. You got the credit counseling industry. You got the debt settlement industry. You got everybody. You got Dave Ramsey telling you how horrible it is. Yeah. Everybody's telling you you should never even consider it. So. Why, how does a consumer stand a fighting chance to even look at it and, and, and get an honest look at whether or not it's going to make sense for them when everybody they know is telling them that it's the most horrible thing except for the bankruptcy attorney? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the consumer thinks, well, of course they're going to say bankruptcy is good. Yeah, they they sell bankruptcy. Sell bankruptcy. So, oh, you know, that bankruptcy is bad. But then when you flip it, the bankruptcy attorney is going to tell you debt settlement's a scam. You should never do that. And mm -hmm. credit counseling is too expensive. And that doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense. And everybody you talk to is going to tell you the other stuff that they don't do is bad. Right. But what they do is the best. Everybody has the best thing ever for you. And that's why consumers get confused. And when I'm able to talk to them and walk them through how these things actually work, here's how bankruptcy is going to work for you. Here's how debt settlement is going to work for you. Here's how credit counseling is going to work for you. Here's how the good old fashioned Dave Ramsey's tiny feet is going to work for you. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong. For some clients, tiny feet is the best answer. Yeah. For other clients, Little bankruptcy is the best answer. Yep. Yeah, and when I say tiny feet, it's you know we're talking about Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Baby steps, yeah. One day Steve called it tiny feet, and we've just been <laughs> going with that for years because I think it's hilarious. But the and, point is, mm -hmm. what? I no, just and, the, and, and the irony is <laughs> that uh, Dave Ramsey and his anti-bankruptcy stance, um, he owes his entire career to bankruptcy. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the the point, the big takeaway is no situation is is you know, the same, everybody's unique. And yeah. it's before you make any big decision, it's good to break it down and think about it from different angles and, and not go into it with pre-assumptions, especially the assumption that if my credit score goes down, it's bad. Yeah. Right. Because what could happen, what's positive on the other side could far outweigh any potential negatives of your credit score going down. Yeah. If your credit score goes down a little bit because you took intentional, purposeful action that's one thing. If your credit score goes down because you got your head in the sand and you're not willing to do anything, that's that's bad. But speaking of all that, Damon, I'm looking at the clock here. I know that you have a client consult coming up in just a couple of minutes. So I don't want to I don't want to keep you from that. Okay. You also don't want to edit anything longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> well, that's true too. I but see if, what you're doing. But if people uh, want to get in touch with you and talk to you about their situation, uh, go to Damon, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y dot com, and uh, you can get in touch with Damon. Talk it through. Don't make an emotional decision. Get the facts. Make a smart decision. Damon, I will see you. Just the facts, ma'am. Peace.